Of all SwiftUI's view types, list is the one you rely on the most. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to use it the most. Things like text or vStack will claim that particular crown. But list is a real workhorse you'll come back to again and again and again. This is not new. Even Apple's original UI framework for iOS, UIKit, had an equivalent called UI Table View. And that was used just as much. Now, the job of list is to provide a scrolling table of data. In fact, it's pretty much identical to form, which you've seen already. Difference is, list is for presentation of data, whereas form is for user input. Don't get me wrong, form is a really useful view and use that one a lot too, but really it's just a specialized type of list. Now, just like form, you can provide a list with a selection of static views to work with, have them rendered in individual rows. So I could say there's a list here with text, hello world. I'll do that three times, boom, and get my list like that. We can also switch out list to have dynamic data using a for each. We could say there's a list here and we'll count from uh, for each z zero to five. And inside there, we'll say a text view with, let's just do, uh, oops, crazy. let's just do dynamic row dot zero like that. And now we'll get five rows with the numbers like that. Now where things get more interesting is when you mix and match static rows and dynamic rows. So we could say here there's a list with text static row one and then two, then some dynamic rows, and then we'll do below it three and four. So we're mixing and matching static and dynamic in the same list, they all work great. And of course we can combine this with sections. We could say I want to break up my list to be easier to read by saying here is a section with a title of section one and place row one and row two into there. Put the whole for each in section two, like this. And then at the end, we'll do one last section for the last part, section three, like that. And as you can see, we have the titles down the way. Now, a, a tip for you here, if your section header is just a string, you can pass in directly as a string to the section initializer. It's a helpful shortcut for times when you don't need anything more advanced. So here we have titles going straight in there appearing as well before. Now being able to have static and dynamic content lets us recreate things like uh, Apple's Wi-Fi screen in iOS. You know, you want to toggle a, a, a Wi-Fi on or off and have a dynamic selection of nearby networks below. Some static, some dynamic. Now you'll notice this list we have right now looks similar to the form we had previously, but we can adjust that. We can say, actually, uh, I want to change the way the list looks by adding a list style modifier to the list. I'll say list style, give me the grouped style. And it'll go edge to edge now like that. Now, everything you've seen so far works fine with form as well as list, even the dynamic stuff. That hasn't changed. But one thing list can do that form can't is generate its rows entirely from dynamic content without a for each in place. We can say, for example, uh, let's uh, get rid of this code here temporarily. We'll do list zero to five, and inside there, text dynamic row dot zero. So there's no more for each at all. It goes straight into the list. And this lets us build lists very, very quickly, which is helpful given how common they are. Now in this project, we'll be using lists slightly differently because we're making it loop over an array of strings. Now we've used for each previously with ranges, you know, zero to five, or whatever, or variable data, zero to students.count or whatever. That works great because SwiftUI can identify each row in the range uniquely based on its position inside the range. When working with an array of data, SwiftUI still needs to know how to identify every item inside the loop. So it knows every row is unique. So if one gets removed, it can simply remove that one rather than having to recreate the whole list. So it's optimization. 
This is where the ID parameter comes in and it works just like uh, for each with list. We can say ID, some identifier, and it'll use that to identify every row in the list uniquely. Now, when we have arrays of uh, strings and numbers, the only thing that makes those unique is the value itself. So in the array 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, there is nothing else in there other than the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And that's where backslash self comes in useful. The same is true of strings and, and also true for lists. So we can say in here, for example, we have an array of people called Finn and Leia and Luke and Ray. And then we can go over the people in this list by saying list of people with ID of backslash dot self. And then just put that directly into the text inside the list, like so. And that'll work just the same with, as we have with for each. So you can go ahead and, and use list, use for each, use ID self, just like you have before. So we could say, if we got back to what I had before, start the list here, then have, uh, let's do one static row, for example, like that. I'll scrap this one. And the for each, we're going to make this thing go over our uh, items, our names array. So let's go ahead and add a few static rows like this, more or less. Static row. Uh, the formatting isn't, there we go, much better. That's, that's control I, by the way, folks, <laughs> it reindents your code. Um, we could say for each uh, people uh, ID of backslash dot self and then text dollar zero. So now we have static rows, top and bottom, plus the people loop in the middle, all being joined together into one single list. 